Hello, welcome back to Retro Break. Today I'm on my way to the London Gaming Market. I'm just heading to the train now, so I'll see you on the other side for a tour of the event. Thanks for watching. So this clip here may have made it seem like it only took a few seconds to get there, but actually it was about three hours because the train was delayed. But even so, it felt fantastic to be back at the London Gaming Market once again. I think this is the first time that I've actually been at the London one this year, and I had a fantastic time. It was, as always, incredibly busy, so this footage you're seeing now is from towards the end of the show, and I actually recorded the entire thing using my Osmo Pocket, and I'm still trying to figure out some of the settings, so hopefully it looks okay and you can make out all the game titles alright. And we're starting the tour here at Retro Pops Games. I think this stall is, taking a look at some PS2 titles there. I saw Star Ocean till the end of time, fantastic game that is. And now a quick look at some N64 titles. There's a few there that I don't have, although it is getting extremely difficult to find games that I don't already own at these kind of events. And there's a few SNES games there as well. There's a few there that I don't have as well. I don't have that Smurfs game or the Power Rangers one just above it there. But the majority of the more interesting games I do already own. But I did manage to find some really interesting stuff which I'll be showing in my pickups video uh, next week at some point now. So stay tuned for that one. And this was a really cool stall here. They were selling refurbished special edition DS's. I really love that Final Fantasy one there, the Ring of Fates. And there's the uh, Pokemon 2DS and the Pokemon uh, Game Boy Advance SP. And here are some really cool looking artwork, some cool art posters. For some of my favourite games I can see Spyro the Dragon, Crash Bandicoot, Metal Gear Solid I've never really played, I know that may surprise a few of you. On this, uh, on this shelf here there's some really cool uh, consoles for sale. There's a Game.com there, I was kind of tempted to pick that up because I'm sure you all know how fantastic the Game.com is. And as we come round to this stall here, I really like this one. They were selling a lot of really cool Japanese stuff. You can see there's a Tamagotchi there, there's a few Japanese uh, Game Boy Advance and Game Boy games. And I see Tetris DX on the Game Boy Color, Wave Race 64, Yoshi's Story. And as you can see there under the table as well, there was loads of retro magazines. Unfortunately, I didn't pick any retro magazines up this time. I usually end up getting one, so I'm not quite sure why I didn't pick one up. I was looking for a Game Boy one, but I couldn't find one actually. And there's some Game Boy games there as well. I see Harvest Moon 3, and I think it was Mario's Picross there as well. And I'm not sure the name of this stall, but they had some really cool rare items at the back here. So I tried to angle the camera up. And I've slowed the footage down just enough that you should be able to make out what's up there. I can see Pokemon Stadium 2, Paper Mario, that's a game that I don't have on the N64, surprisingly. So maybe I'll pick that one up at a future event. There's also Shinobi 3 there on the Mega Drive, that's a game that I'm looking to get in the future. The first time I actually played Shinobi 3 was on the Mega Drive Mini that I got recently, and I absolutely loved it, so I'm definitely looking to pick up the original at some point in the future. Fantastic game, it really is. And there in that box down there is a few more common Mega Drive games, nothing too exciting there. Now this was a more exciting stall, this stall was run by my friend Quang from Asobi Tech. I'm sure if you're part of the retro gaming community you know who he is, fantastic guy and he did me a really good deal on something very exciting which I'll show you in the pickups video. And he had a really cool stall as well with some PC Engine games, a whole load of Vita games there and I guess just some random games from his collection as well, there's Nintendogs, Smash TV for the NES. A few uh, Sega Saturn games there, I almost said Master System. Some really great games, unfortunately I already had all of the games on his stall, but there was one thing that I didn't have, which I think you might see in this footage, or I might have already picked it up by now. I can't remember whether I filmed this before or after. Uh, I tell a lie, there is a game that I don't have, Resident Evil Gaiden on the Game Boy Color, but it was 120 quid. but that's about average for that game, it is crazy expensive. And now this stall here, here's some Game Boy Advance, uh, Game Boy Color and original Game Boy games. Nothing too exciting down there, usually the rarer, more expensive and interesting Game Boy games are at the back of the stalls, as you just saw there very briefly. Hopefully the footage is slow enough that you're actually able to see some of the games here. I did intentionally film at double the frame rate so I could slow it down like this, and it should still be fairly smooth to watch. 
So let me know if you like this sort of format and I'll try and do it again for the next uh, retro market. I don't think I'll be in the UK for the next London one as I'll actually be in Japan and I'll be filming a lot more more exciting videos while I'm in Japan so definitely look forward to them ones at some point um, early next year around March or April time. Nothing too exciting here, there's Pluck on the SNES, fantastic game, I absolutely love Pluck. If you've never played it before, highly highly recommend that one. I did do a video about it many years ago but that video is kind of dated now, so maybe I should do an updated one at some point. It's such a shame there was never a sequel to Pluck. And having a look through some of the SNES games here, there was Super Mario Kart, Super Mario World, Pack Attack, a pretty fun Pac-Man puzzle game. Oh, I didn't get to see what that one was there. Prehistoric Man, that one's okay. But once again, when I'm flicking through these boxes, I've pretty much got every game here. The ones that I don't really have are the ones that are on the back of the stalls, especially when it comes to the Nintendo games now, the SNES, the N64. I think I've got all the common games for them sort of systems. That, that's something I don't have, the Sharp Twin Famicom. I would love to get one of them one day. I haven't got any kind of Famicom, actually. Maybe I'll end up picking one up while I'm in Japan. And there's a PC Engine Core Graphics. Not the best way of playing PC Engine games, that would be the Duo RX instead because that can play the CD games as well. But the core graphics does look very nice and up there is the Sega Mark III which was the Japanese version of the Sega Master System. And I thought that was kind of pricey for what it was but I guess it comes with the FM sound unit which is something that's very sought after with collectors because it does make the games sound a hell of a lot better compared to the Master System that we got. And this stall back here, this is Alan's, re Alan's Japanese Retro Games, fantastic bloke, I've spoke to him many times at these events in the past, and unfortunately his stall was very busy, I mean not unfortunately for him, but unfortunately for me trying to get footage, it was extremely busy, so I didn't manage to get too much, but hopefully you can pick out a few interesting games here while I sweep the camera around, and have a bit of a flick through some of the Game Boy games there, let me know if you see anything interesting. I couldn't quite make out what they were and there were some Neo Geo games at the back there as well and just tons of games on every Japanese system imaginable. Fantastic stall. I could easily spend all day just looking through the games on his stall alone. Definitely one of my favourites to find at every expo. There you can see one of the simple series on the PS1. That's, an, that's actually a series of games that I would love to get the full set of because they're all kind of cheap and they all seem like quite interesting games because they take gaming concepts and really distill them down to the most basic form. I picked one of them up with a Tetris one, which you will see in my pickups video next week. And something that he told me at the last expo I was at, I'm trying to show it off here, but these games don't actually do it. Most Japanese PS1 and Sega Saturn games have Japanese on one side of the... Um, on one side of... That's actually the Tetris game that I picked up, by the way, so you'll see that in the pickups video, but what I was saying is one side of the cart has English and the other side has Japanese, so if you're ever unsure what a game is and you, you've got access to pick it up, just turn it around and fingers crossed it might have the English title on the other side. That's a fantastic tip and I wish I'd known that sooner, so hopefully that's going to help some of you guys out in the future as well. There's another one with that example there, I think it was Panzer Front, I don't really know what that game's like, let me know if you've played it. But I just think that's really cool that you can turn the games around like that and see the English on the other side. And there's some Japanese PS3 and some Dreamcast games there as well. Theme Aquarium, I actually had that on the PC back in the day on Windows 95, loved that game. I loved all of the theme park and theme, theme hospital, theme aquarium, all them kind of games, they were, they were really fun. I don't really have the time to sink into a sim style game like that anymore though, which is kind of a shame. And here's a load of Japanese Dreamcast games. The Dreamcast is a system that unfortunately I can't play at the minute because mine's broken, but I am looking to pick up a modded version in the future with the HDMI mod and, you know, region free, all of that stuff. And I'll definitely be looking to start collecting some more uh, Japanese Dreamcast games in the future. There's, uh, I can't remember what that one's called, Rockman Dash? Not Rockman Dash, that's Rockman, that's Mega Man Legends, isn't it? Rockman Battle and Chase, I think. 
which was basically Mega Man's take on Mario Kart. But of course it didn't do as well as Mario Kart, but it seems like an interesting game. It's one that I'd like to play in the future anyway. And this store here, uh, taking a look at some of the PS2 games. Outrun 2006, Coast to Coast, that is a fantastic game. The original Half-Life there on the PS2 as well. Crash Team Racing, some really good games in that box there. And as you can see, most of the stalls actually had a lot more games under the tables as well. Which was alright towards the end of the event, but if you're trying to look under the table during like the middle of the day, it's impossible because you're basically just shoulder to shoulder with people the entire time. And taking a quick look at the back here, I can see Mario, uh, Dr. Mario and Tetris, brilliant game on the SNES. There's Virtual Racing for the 32X, that's a really cool port of the arcade game and I would love to get a 32X at some point and that's one of the games that I would like to get it for because it's a really good port. Even though it was released on the Sega Saturn afterwards, I'd still really like to play the 32X version. There's Bubble Bubble on the NES. I do already have it, but it's one of my favourite games of all time. So I was uh, just picking that one up to show the camera. There was Gyromite there as well, of course. That's the game that um, was built for Rob the Robot of Smash Brothers fame these days. There's Fester's Quest, of course. That one's famous because of AVGN. Battletoads, uh, Double Dragon. I picked up the Game Boy version of that, actually. I've not actually got the NES one. Maybe I should have picked that one up. And... Nothing too exciting there on the N64, just Mario Kart. And some PSP games there. Innocent Life of Futuristic Harvest Moon, that's one that I'd like to try and get on the PSP at some point. PSP is kind of a system that I overlooked at the time, but I do really like it, so I would like to try and get some more games for it. It's definitely one of those uh, consoles where there's a lot of hidden gems that you don't really hear that much about. And there's a few Japanese Sega Saturn games. Pia Carrot, I thought, was a puzzle game, but I think I was thinking of Poochie Carrot, not Pia Carrot. So that one looks more like a visual novel. And some more Dreamcast games here. Uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica, great game. Probably my favourite Resident Evil game, maybe. Maybe my second favourite. There's Dino Crisis on the PS1. That's a game that I don't have, but I am looking to get at some point because me and my girlfriend have slowly been playing through all of the classic Resident Evil games and I would love to see what Capcom did with dinosaurs as well. I just think the idea is really good and I don't really know why they didn't carry on the Dino Crisis series because I would love to see more games like that. Imagine a modern day remake that was like Monster Hunter or something, that would be really cool. And here's another box full of PS2 games. There seemed to be a lot of PS2 games at this event, like way more than normal. And you'll see later on, there was basically a stall that took up the entire side of one room, and it was nothing but PS2 games. And, surprisingly, on that stall, I didn't find the PS2 game I was looking for. I actually found it at a different stall in just one of these little boxes, so that was kind of weird. And there was some PS1 games there, I saw Need for Speed, Porsche Unleashed, I think it is, or Porsche Challenge, something like that, so that's one that I'm looking to get, because I would like to get all of the Need for Speed games at some point. I can also see there, Cool Borders 2, nothing too exciting on that shelf, and there's some stuff at the back there, again nothing too exciting, there was Tron Bon in the corner, that's a very rare PS1 game, part of the Mega Man series. Kind of a offshoot of the Mega Man Legends games. There's a few GameCube games there. Not too many GameCube games at this event, unfortunately. That's another system that I'd like to try and get a complete set for in the future because there wasn't that many games released for it. And a lot of the uh, third party games are quite interesting and slightly better than the PS2 versions from what I've played. And now having a flip through some more SNES games, that's always fun. Nothing too exciting though, there was Monopoly, I can't see what that one is because of the glare. I can see the Incredible Hulk, Crash Dummies, Zombies, which is the UK name for Zombies Ain't My Neighbours. There's another look at the games at the back there, there's Tron Bon, Hogs of War, that's a great game, Star Ocean 2, I think that was. I haven't got that one, I hear it's a really good game though, a game that I'd definitely love to play at some point in the future. There's some GBA and Game Boy games there, there's Golden Sun. If you haven't played Golden Sun, that's a fantastic JRPG for the Game Boy Advance. Highly recommend that and a sequel. And I loved the idea of this. They had all the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games in this 
card folder and it just made it so easy to flick through and it seemed a lot easier than trying to go through those normal game display box things because they usually get really cramped and you usually have to take a game out and try and look at the front of it whereas this you can just sort of lay them all out flat and see exactly what's there. There was one exciting Game Boy game that I found in this. Um, it's not on that one. I don't know whether I recorded this before or after I bought it. Uh, I don't actually have that game that was up there. I think it was Quarth, maybe. Should have picked that one up as well. Yeah, I think the game that I bought isn't in there now, but I just really like the idea of displaying the games like this. It made it very easy to look through. There's a few games there I don't have actually. I don't have that Tamagotchi game, or at least I don't have the UK version. I've got the Japanese one, but that's not much good. And there was uh, a lot of Japanese Game Boy Advance games there. I didn't do a flick through on camera for some reason though. And here's some boxed N64 games. Uh, there's Wetrix, that's a fun game. Didn't really see much there. Feel free to pause the video if it's going too fast. I did try and look at most of the games, but it does look like I went a bit fast watching this back, unfortunately. Nothing too exciting there on the NES either. Captain Skyhawk. That game was a big disappointment. I remember when I was little, I was very excited to play that, and it turned out to be a bit rubbish. There was a Tiny Toons game there on the NES. I don't have that one. I wonder if that's any good. And the legendary Barcode Battler. I'm sure everyone had that back in the day. And there's some more interesting boxed N64 games. Tetrisphere is a really good game. Excite Bike 64, that's a great game as well. Didn't quite see what was up there on the SNES though on the other side. Let me know if you spotted anything interesting in the comments below. This is kind of cool. Here's a load of different Pez dispensers with all Mario and Pokemon figures on. And some more PS1 games here. Nothing terribly exciting. There was that Need for Speed game again there. And there is F-Zero X, the new Tetris on the N64. Great game, I picked that one up this year actually at one of these one of these many events that I've been to over the year. I do hope you enjoy these in-depth looks at all the gaming markets. Hopefully it's not too boring, but I know some people just like to really have a good look around, so that's why I do these kind of videos. I don't expect people to watch them all the way through, so if you're still here, let me know. You've made it almost halfway, 20 minutes in. There's Chameleon Twist on the N64. I love that game. That's another game that I did a video for in the past, and I'd love to go back and sort of redo those older videos, because I think I've got a lot better over time, naturally. Uh, what is here? Nothing too exciting. I keep saying that. I was kind of disappointed at this retro market. There wasn't anything that really, really excited me like there, like there has been at past events. The most exciting thing was the thing that I picked up from a Sobe Tech store, which I'll be showing in the pickups video, and I don't want to spoil it because it is really, really cool. But apart from that, looking around most of the tables, maybe it's just because I've got all the stuff that I'm looking for at this point, but nothing really jumped out, you know, to make me feel that excited about what I was seeing, but maybe that's just me, but some something about the quality of this event didn't quite live up to some of the ones in past years. I'm not really sure why though. Maybe that's just me having been to so many of them, you know. But yeah, it was still fun. It was still fun. And there's still some good stuff around. There's DuckTales and Mega Man 4, my favourite Mega Man game on the NES. And what else is there? All the Spyro games, Crash Bash, Mega Man X4, X5 and X6. I can't see the prices there, but I presume they were quite expensive. Yeah, I can't quite make the prices out there, unfortunately. There's also a few rarer GameCube games, Resident Evil 3, uh, Zelda Twilight Princess, my f second favourite Zelda game, after Skyward Sword. Don't tell anyone, because people don't like Skyward Sword for some reason, but I love it. And I'm too scared to make a video about it, because I know people are going to shout at me. And there's some more Dreamcast games. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. And there's Jumping Flash on the PS1 Japanese version. That's a game I don't have. I hear it's very good. I played it for a few seconds on the PlayStation Classic. But 
I would love to have the actual version of it at some point in the future. Now this stall here, this was another really good stall. They had loads of stuff at the back, as you can see. Loads of really interesting different boxed consoles and stuff. And then just so many Japanese games and the stall was just way too long and you couldn't even get to the ones at the back. I kind of wish you'd been able to walk all the way around to the other side and have a look through the boxes rather than try and lean over. But there was definitely some interesting stuff in this one. Not all Japanese games as well by the looks of it. There's some UK N64 games there, some good games. I think I've got all those though. And then there's some Mega Drive games here. Alien Storm, that's a really fun game. I don't actually own Alien Storm on its own. I only own it as part of the Mega Games collection on the on the uh, Mega Games Volume 2, is it, I think? Or Volume 1. And there's some GBA games there, a mix of Japanese and UK ones. There's one I'm looking for on the GBA, a Japanese game called Magical Hoshin. So fingers crossed I'll find that at a future event as well. And there was a box there of PS1 games. And there's some more uh, Japanese Dreamcast and PC Engine games, I think. In this box here, I can see the special edition of Code Veronica, which is really cool. And what can I see there on the PS1? Rayman 2, that's one of my favourite Rayman games, if not my favourite game in the entire Rayman series. I love Rayman 2. <clears throat> uh, Lost Vikings 2 on the Sega Saturn, that's one that I really want. I love Lost Vikings on the SNES, I think that game's fantastic. Really, really clever game. And there's some PS2 games there, I saw R-Type Final, which is a great shooting game on the PS2. And there's some Japanese PS2 games as well. I saw King of Fighters, I couldn't quite make any of the other ones out. And here's the Sega Saturn games, I can see Solo Crisis there, that's a game that I picked up recently. Uh, to be part of my Quintet game series, my game collection for Quintet. Which I'm hoping to do a video on next year at some point on the history of Quintet itself. And looking up here at the back, I think that's the Sakura Wars Dreamcast, that's really rare. And the Hello Kitty one as well, that's really cool to see. And the Super Game Boy in the box for the SNES. And here we have some of the rarer games. There was no prices on these though, which I thought was a bit weird. There was Mega Man X3 at the back there, Tombi 2, uh, Thunder Force 5. There's a nice close-up of Mega Man X3. One day I'll get that, but that game's crazy expensive. It is a really good game though, I've got the Japanese version on the SNES. Not my favourite X game, my favourite X game is actually Mega Man X2, I think. Let me know what your favourite one is down below, unless you say X7, and then I'll block you. <laughs> and what have we got here? Some N64 stuff, Pokemon Snap I just picked up there. Definitely the best Pokemon spin-off. Uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 for the N64. I used to love that game. Uh, I played it on the Dreamcast though, not on the N64. So I wonder how, how they compare to each other. Here's some Japanese Mega Drive games. Galaxy Force 2. Really good game. Hard driving. That's not a Japanese one though, I don't think. It looks like this box was kind of a mix of Japanese and European ones. There's the Japanese Shining Force 2. Brilliant game series. The first time I actually played Shining Force 2 was very recently. On the, Mega Drive Mini, on the Mega Drive Mini, and I can't believe I've missed out on that series for so long. I really need to go back and play it. And I'd love to get Shining Force 3 on the Sega Saturn as well. I hear that's a really good game. And a cool little box of Mega... Not Mega Drive, what am I saying? Uh, Super Nintendo games. And there's some more SNES games up here. I can see ActRaiser 2 for the Super Famicom. Not a huge fan of ActRaiser 2. I think it's way, way too difficult, and the character moves too slowly which I find kind of annoying. There's Star Ocean, the first Star Ocean game. I love the graphics in Star Ocean on the SNES. I think they look absolutely fantastic. There's also Super Metroid, Star Fox, Final Fantasy V, uh, Prince of Persia, Darius, loads of really cool games in this box. Very good box. Romance in Saga, there's another one. I think Breath of Fire there at the back. Fanlax with the good box art, not like the really crappy one that we got over here and in America. I think I picked this one up in a second. Yeah, there we go. Look how much better this box art is. Although the spaceship does look kind of weird, but if you compare that to the one that we got, you'll be able to see why it's so much better than uh, the abomination that is the European box art for that game. And here's some Hue cards for the PC Engine. 
Don't really know what any of these games were because of course they're all in Japanese and the problem with just looking at hue cards you can't actually see any screenshots or anything so it really is just luck of the draw with a lot of these games as to whether they'll be any good or not. I can see on the other bit there at the back there's Street Fighter 2 which is actually a really good port for the PC Engine surprisingly considering it's, an only, it's only an 8-bit system they did an amazing job porting that to the PC Engine just crazy and I think these things here, these are hammer beads uh, put into picture frames which is always cool to see but I don't usually spend too long looking at these sort of um, things at the events, I'm usually just focused on the games but I thought for the video I will come and get a little bit of footage of them for you so you can see what else there is at these sort of events, what you can kind of expect and this stall here, I think we've gone all the way around now, I think this one was back at the start of the event near the beginning. I'm sure there's some stalls I've missed on the way around, so I apologise if you were running any of them stalls and you're watching the video. I tried to get footage of everything, but I'm sure there are some bits that I missed. And it's kind of just gone past there, but that 3DS demo kiosk thing was really cool. And I did kind of want to buy it, but it was like 200 and something quid. But I just think it would really, it would be really cool to actually own something that was on display in a shop once. I've always liked the idea of that. I, if you remember in my Super Tomato video, they had the display thing for the Dreamcast. I thought that looked really cool as well. I'm not sure if I've already shown this stall and then gone back to it. So apologies if I have. But there you go. A nice little look at some more Sega Saturn games. And Sonic R on the end there. My favourite game on the Sega Saturn, possibly. And here's a look at some of the rarer games at the back. I slowed it down a bit there for you, so hopefully you managed to pick out some cool stuff there. There's some PSP games. Never really see that many PSP games at these kind of events. And then on the shelf at the back there, some not quite rare things. I wouldn't call them rare, but some more interesting games. And there's a random Commodore VIC-20 for 90 quid. Don't see too many of them around, so that was pretty cool. And I didn't uh, do the stall next to it. They were selling... Dungeons and Dragons dice or something like that, so wasn't really interested in that. This store was pretty cool though, they were selling a lot of different consoles. As you can see, they'd spread everything out over the table. There's loads of Game Boy Advance and Game Boy games there, a few random DS's, a Game Boy Pocket. Maybe I should try and collect all the different versions of the Game Boy, like all the different colours and stuff. Maybe once I've finished my UK Game Boy collection, I might go into collecting for the systems themselves. That would be kind of fun. There's so many different variations on the Game Boy line. There's the Play It Loud series, there's all the Japanese exclusive ones with all the pictures, all the different Pokemon ones. I think that'd be kind of fun to do and display them nicely. And this store, for some reason, had a load of boxed Mega Drive 2s. You can see them all stacked up there. I didn't see how much they were selling them for, though. And this store here, this is Deadpan Robot, or maybe Dead Geeky, I'm not sure which. But it's always cool to see this stall, they recognise me now because I've been to so many of these different events and I actually looked after the stall for a bit while the lady running it went to the toilet because she didn't have the guy with her this time, it was her there on her own, so that was good to see. Unfortunately I'd already got all these games here so I didn't actually buy anything off her, but it is really good to see this stall and hopefully at the next event, which will be Birmingham MCM, I might find something there that I don't have. It would be really good to buy something from them again, because they are really cool. Let me know if you saw anything interesting on that shelf. I'd say probably Dragon Dragon Warrior Monsters was the best game on there. Maybe Mega Man Zero. But yeah, they also sell t-shirts and stuff like that, which is really cool. And this one here, nothing too exciting. I told myself I wouldn't say that again, but there we go. There's Mickey Mania on the SNES. That was one of the first games I ever played on the SNES, actually. I rented it from Blockbuster when it was new. And I was amazed that the first level was in black and white. I thought that was really cool for some reason. I was very, very excited about it. I don't actually have that game anymore, so maybe uh, Mickey Mania is a game that I'll look to pick up in the future. There was also there one of them cheap bargain boxes for some Game Boy games, but as you can see, most of it was just junk or stuff that I'd already got. And I'm going to have a quick flick through some Game Boy Color games here. I never really like them being displayed in these sort of plastic boxes because they can be quite hard to flick through, especially if they're fully uh, filled out. I prefer it if they're all just in one big line and I can flick through all of them. So you can see they're kind of struggling. I saw a Tetris DX 
Uh, Game & Watch Gallery 3, I think, was behind that for the Game Boy Color. But, yeah. Uh, what else is there? Crash 2 on the GBA. And there were some memory cards on the side there. I actually need to get a memory card for the PS1 because I started playing the Grand Stream Saga and then I realised I only have PS2 memory cards, none for the PS1, so I couldn't actually save my progress. So I was kind of annoyed about that. And this stall here, this was probably my favourite stall at the event. As you can see while I'm flicking through these carts here, they have little stickers on them with screenshots and I just thought that was a brilliant idea because obviously all these games here are the Japanese games and not a lot of people would actually know what they are. So I spoke to the guy and told him it was a good idea and he said originally he'd only planned to do it on the Super Famicom carts themselves but then he got a bit carried away and decided to put stickers on every single game that he was selling and it must have just taken forever because he even wrote a little bit of a description about each game as well. So props to him. I'm uh, very impressed by this stall, and I've actually got his business card right here. It's called The House of Shadowloo. At the minute, I think they're only on Facebook, but they also have a website called houseofshadowloo.com, and if you have a look on there, I had a look yesterday, it just redirects to their eBay page, um, but definitely go and check them out, and hopefully they'll be at future events. I would love to shop at his stall again in the future. I think I picked up two games from here, but they were both Tetris games, so they didn't really need the stickers on because I kind of know what to expect with Tetris. But even so, really cool stall. And here's a flick through some of the PC Engine CD games. I kind of wish I'd spent a bit longer on this one, actually, because there's probably a few games here that I would have been interested in. There's Afterburner 2, I think that was, and Eldis before it. Eldis, unfortunately, is a terrible game. I did pick it up thinking it would be one of the hidden gems on the PC Engine because it was a, a horizontal shooter, but it turned out to be kind of pants, so I kind of wish I'd read up about that one beforehand. So a bit disappointed. And now with the PS1 here, I can see Puyo Puyo Sun. There's the simple Tetris game that I bought from this store. You can see it's got the sticker on there as well. And behind that was another one of the simple 1000 and something series. So maybe I should have picked that one up as well. Yeah, I really hope they're at a future event. I love that store. And this next stall here, this was another great one. Really enjoyed uh, the way they would got the more expensive and rare games displayed at the back here. There was some really interesting stuff. There's Grandia on the Game Boy Color, Mega Man 3 on the NES, Blue Shadow, one of my favorite NES games. More people should know about that game, it's really good. I actually prefer it over uh, Ninja Gaiden, to be honest. And there's also Solar Turbo, which is uh, one of my favorite games on the DS. I would love to get Tail Consorto at some point, I think that's what it's called, on the PS1, which is kind of the prequel to Solo Turbo. And here's a load of Castlevania games as well. The only Castlevania games that I've got left to get, I think, are Castlevania 3 on the NES, Castlevania Legends on the Game Boy, and Castlevania... is it Legacy of Darkness on the N64? I can't remember what that one is, I think it's Legacy of Darkness. Not Castlevania 64, the one that came out the year after that improved on it, so... I think I've only got them three left to get. I got Rondo of Blood and I got the uh, Mega Drive one as well. Can't remember what that one was called, but... My favourite's Rondo of Blood, I absolutely love that game. And what else is here? I can see a random pink Japanese Game Boy game there, I think. Maybe it's a Game Boy game, couldn't quite make it out. There's Super Hang On. Light Crusader on the Mega Drive, that's a good game. A few random Sega Saturn games there, and a box full of SNES games. You can see Prince of Persia at the back there. That's a classic. Not sure what that one is. There's Zool, a game that makes me think of the Amiga, and I find it really weird that it was actually on other systems as well. And there's a box of random Japanese games. There's Dra Grandia 2 for the Dreamcast. Um, Biohazard 1, Resident Evil Remake on the GameCube. Amazing remake if you haven't played it. There's a random Atari Lynx game. I was kind of tempted to get that until I looked at the back and thought it actually looked like a really boring game. So I didn't bother going for that in the end. But I would like to get more Lynx games if you've got any recommendations. I was recommended Gates of Zendikon, but that game turned out to be not that great. So I'm kind of disappointed in that. 
I haven't really found that many games that I enjoy on the Lynx yet, so fingers crossed I can find some more in the future. I find it a fascinating system. And here's some Japanese Sega Saturn games. I just noticed Elevator Action there, that's a game that I would love to get on the Japanese Saturn. And here's some Dreamcast games, there's the, bo the two Shenmue games. Donkey Kong Land on the Game Boy, Japanese version, I think. Gunbird 2 on the Dreamcast, love that. Grandia 2 as well. And what else do we have here? A box. Oh yeah, there were some CDI games in this box. But unfortunately, nothing interesting. The only thing I'm really, really looking for on the CDI at the minute is a controller. Because I've actually got most of the games that are actual games, but I don't really have a way of playing them. Because the only controller I've got for it is that stupid TV remote style one that just feels horrible. And on the end here, we've got some Sega Master System games. Now, the Master System's uh, a console that I haven't got that many games for. So I would love to try and get some more Master System games at some point. And I think that was all the tables in this hall. So now we're going through to the other side. And I met up with my friend Ryan from Numskull and Chris from Games You Loved. And I chatted with them for a bit and I played on all of these amazing quarter arcade cabinets here. I've got the Pac-Man one and I'll definitely be ordering some in the future. But I'm kind of out of space at the moment. But I do love the look of them. I would love to get the Galaga and Galaxian ones as well. And they're coming out with the Dig Dug one soon as well, so maybe in the future, when I get a bigger house and a bigger game room, I can get some more of those quarter arcade cabinets. But it's always good catching up with them guys, they're always great to be around. And Numskull, I have to say they're a great company because they've been sending me some stuff for the channel recently. I'm actually playing through a game called You Know, uh, I've got it right here on the PS4. You Know, a girl who chants love at the bounds of this world. It's a really cool time travel, different dimensions style visual novel. It is very slow though, I was playing it to capture some footage and I've played it for about five hours so far and only just got past the intro. <laughs> but anyway, enough about that game, you'll see it in a future video at some point, fingers crossed before the end of the year. And as you can see on this stall here, there was just an insane amount of PS2 games. Literally hundreds and hundreds of them. They took up the entire side of the room. So that was really cool to see and then some uh, PS1 games at the end there. I did have a look through all those PS2 games for one in particular that I was looking for for my Quintet collection, but they actually didn't have it, believe it or not. But I did manage to pick it up from one of the other stalls, but I'll save the surprise for the pickups video coming next week. And these were cool as well. These are like arcade uh, banner things that used to go at the top of the arcade cabinets. If I had more space, I would have loved to get one of them, but as well, I'd have to carry it back on the train and stuff. And I did try and go to the Pokemon Center after this event had finished, which you'll see a little bit of footage of at the end of this video. Unfortunately, it was closed, though. And this was the stall at the back of the market. Sorry for this footage here of the lovely carpet and not much else. I think I'll go back to the stall in a second. There we go. And there were some PSP games there. But nothing that was really jumping out at me on the PSP. I don't really know too much about the PSP though, so if you've got any recommendations for it, let me know. I think I said that earlier, but I've been recording this over several days, so I can't quite remember what I said at the start of this video. And to be honest, I don't really know if anyone's still listening, so if you are, let me know. You've made it to almost 40 minutes. I think this one's the longest tour that I've done so far. But I really did enjoy the event, and there's two more events. Um, this year that I'm going to. There's Birmingham MCM in a few weeks time and then there is uh, Wales Comic Con Telford Takeover in December and I'll be going to that one as well. It's great to have one back in Telford finally after MCM left a few years ago. And what else do we have here? Some PS3 games. Didn't see too many PS3 games at the show so that was quite cool to see. And of course PS2 games. They're everywhere and PS1. And there was a few random controllers and stuff on the table next to it as well. Uh, I think last year there was quite a lot more in that room. It felt kind of empty to this time. And then this stall here, they did me a really good deal on a few Game Boy games that I didn't have. Um, they did recognise me actually. I think this is called Golden Saucer. Gold Saucer, something like that. 
I can see some rare games back there. Unfortunately, I already had all them, like Starhawk and Bubble and Ghost, Metroid, Metroid 2, Mega Man 3, I think that was. There's one of the games I picked up, Infogenius Personal Organizer. I did, I did say to him, you're probably going to laugh at these choices because they were all just the Infogenius games, but, you know, it's for the collection, it's got to be done. I didn't really find anything else I didn't have though, unfortunately. I think it's getting to the point now where I literally just have to search for the games on eBay or cough up some money and buy the ones at the back of the stalls, but there's not that many left. I think I've got just over 100 games left to go. I've got 250 Game Boy games now, something like that, so I'm slowly getting there. I've actually got a stack more here that I'm saving for a Game Boy Collection update video in the future. But I'm going to wait until I've got a few more and make a whole video out of it. So look forward to that one. And they are quite interesting games. They're not just completely boring ones either. And having a flick through here, there's Mario Land 2, Wario Blast, Castellian. That's a really interesting game. I always, re I was really amazed at Castellian, the way they managed to get it to work on the original Game Boy. Because if you don't know, on the NES, it's the one that goes around the tower and it all looks 3D and cool and stuff. And I was just blown away with what they managed to do on the Game Boy. There was Micro Machines. There's another one of those Infogenius games. The Learning French one. That's another one I picked up. They were £5 each. But like I said, he did a good deal. But um, yeah, and I got one of the ones in the box as well. It's kind of a shame that I didn't angle the camera up and take a look at some of the boxed games at the back. I didn't really notice them until I went up to the, to the till with these two. And he said he actually had the Spanish one as well, so... If it wasn't for him pointing it out, I wouldn't have got that one, so thank you. But yeah, flicking through the rest of these, I'd already got all these games, unfortunately. But it's still fun to look through. But these days I just feel like if I didn't have them, I would have got excited at seeing some of these games. Maybe it's time for me to set up my own game stall, but... I know I would not really want to part with any of the games. So it would be more like a, you can look, but don't buy kind of thing. So I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Maybe I should just set up an arcade or something. And here's another quick look at the table, I think. I think this, this was the same table. No, maybe, maybe not, not sure. I don't think so, this is back in the other room. I might have just mixed up some of the video files. But there's some cool backlit Game Boy Colors and original Game Boys and stuff. I haven't got a backlit Game Boy Color, I'd like to get one at some point. But the smaller screen size kind of puts me off, because I always found the Game Boy Color screen to be a bit on the small side anyway. So to make it even smaller, even though the quality is a lot nicer, I'm not too sure. And, oh, this stall actually, this stall, uh, my friend on Twitter, Waki Retro Gamer, was running it and he actually spotted me and came up to say hi. Uh, but I didn't actually see him after that, but I did get a bit of footage from his friend's store here I love the fact that they put the stickers on the top of the N64 games And I have no idea why Nintendo thought it was a good idea not to have the game name on the top of the cart Because you can't tell what game it is Which I just think is really silly. So it's a good idea to have them stickers and there's some Virtual Boy games there as well. Vertical Force is a fantastic game on the Game Boy, on the Virtual Boy. And I would love to do a video about the VB at some point in the future, but it is really, really difficult to capture footage from. And I don't really just want to use an emulator either. And I think this is the last stall that I'm going to be looking at here. That was quite cool to see the video organiser for, uh, for the NES. Never actually seen one of them in person, but I'd always seen like the adverts for it and stuff. So that was cool to see, and here's just a quick overview of some of the other stuff that was here. There was Power Strike on the Master System, that's a game that I want for that system. And Power Strike 2 as well, of course. They look really cool, I think they're part of the Aleste series. Uh, my favourite of which is Space Megaforce on the SNES, or Super Aleste. But Space Megaforce is such a cool name though, and that is such a good game as well. Absolutely love that game. And there we go, that was the end of the retro market, but stick around here for a little bit longer because I captured a bit of footage of me on my way to the Pokemon Centre at the Westfield Shopping Centre. Unfortunately, by the time I got there, the queues had already been closed for the day. They'd actually closed the queue at 3 o'clock and I got there at about 4, so I missed it by an hour. I could have got in, but even so, it was still quite cool to see, and... 
I don't think I'm going to get another chance to go back to London and have a look. You, you can see here just how long the queue was. This was at about 20 past 4, I think, after I'd gone to get some food and then came back. It wasn't just this one queue here either. There was actually It was actually split up into two different ones. So here you can see was the second queue outside HMV and um, earlier in the day as well I, I walked around a bit more and I could see a few empty queues. I guess they'd closed it so people couldn't queue up in that bit. And it's just insane how long people have ever been waiting to get into the Pokemon Center. People are literally queuing up from the minute it closes to get in the day after. So they've literally been outside all night waiting. It's just insane and I really hope that they open a permanent shop in the future. And here's the closest I think I'm going to get to going inside. There's a look at the London Pikachu there with his umbrella. And there we go, that was the end of the video. And I finished it off with the five guys from the Birmingham train station and watched some happy console gamer on the way home. So I really hope you enjoyed this tour of the event. It was a very long video and my voice is dying now, but thank you so much for watching. And of course, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for my pickups video, which will be coming out next week. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time for the next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>